In this training lesson, you learn how to use the AN-APG-63 pulse stop the radar to acquire, lock, and engage airborne targets. The APG-63 combines long-range acquisition and attack capabilities with a set of automatic lock features that provide instant information and computations needed during air-to-air -air combat. At any time in this mission, you can press the pause key to pause the mission. The APG-63 has two long-range search modes, range while search and track while scan. Once a target is locked or bugged, it can be either a single track target or a designated track wall scan. The radar derived data is then displayed on the heads up display or the vertical situation display or VSD. Using this information, you can engage targets with the AIM-7M Sparrow medium range semi-active radar guided missile or the AIM-120B or C advanced medium range air to air missile AMRAM. First, we need to turn on the radar by pressing the I key and then enter RWS mode by pressing the 2 key. This will change the data on the HUD and VSD to support beyond visual range or BVR mode. Now I'll call up an AIM-7 missile by pressing the D key until 7M is indicated as ready on the programmable armament control set and boxed. You'll also notice 7M indicated here on the HUD. On the VSD, we can see the sweeping radar antenna as with carrot is scaled with limit circles indicating 60 degrees off the center line or 100 degrees for a full sweep. We can change the ASO scan by pressing the right control and plus or minus keys together and switch between 30 and 60 degrees of antenna ASO sweep. The 60 degrees will provide us a wider search area, but 30 degrees will provide us faster updates. On the left side of the VSD is the antenna elevation carrot and scale. The circles beside the elevation scale represent the radar beam coverage and displays the maximum and minimum altitudes being scanned at thousands of feet. The elevation scan volume can be raised or lowered by pressing right shift and semicolon or period keys together. If a target is significantly above you or below you, you will need to adjust the scan elevation to detect it. The carrot along the scale indicates the four-bar scan in the radar's raster search pattern. The number in the upper right corner of the VSD is the selected display range, and it can be cycled by pressing the plus or minus keys. The VSD has a minimum display range of 10 nautical miles and a maximum display range of 160 nautical miles. The aircraft's true airspeed is displayed in the bottom right-hand corner, and the aircraft's ground speed is displayed in the bottom left corner. Above the ground speed indication is a current pulse repetition frequency, or PRF. This can be cycled between high, medium, and interleaved by pressing right shift and the I keys together. High is the most long range and is best suited for high closure targets. Medium has lesser range, but is best suited for low closure targets. Interleaved alternates PRF between high and medium. To the left of the PRF indication is the current bar in the four bar raster scan pattern. In the center of the VSD is the artificial horizon line and the slewable target designation cursor, or TDC. You can slew the TDC by pressing the comma, period, forward slash, and semicolon keys. By slewing the TDC to either the very top or the very bottom of the VSD, you can change the VSD display range. Moving the TDC up and down of the VSD will also change the elevation scale volume because the radar beam acts as a cone, and the further it goes out, the greater it expands. The TDC gives you a good idea of the volume and space that the radar is covering. A solid horizontal bar on the VSD indicates a hostile radar contact. A small circle symbol indicates a friendly contact. Older hits will gradually fade away. I'll slew the TDC over a hostile target and press the Enter key to lock it up in single target track or STT mode. To unlock the target, you can press the Backspace key. We're now in pre-launch mode and all the radar energy is being focused on the one locked target. This target is our primary designated target, or PDT, and the radar is providing us information on its airspeed, aspect angle, and heading displayed in the upper left corner of the VSD. The PDT appears as a star with a line from it indicating its flight vector. 
The PDT's altitude is next to the aero on the elevation scale, and our closure rate is tracking down the dynamic launch zone, DLZ, scale carrot. For the best chance of success, we want the DLZ carrot to be inside the bracket into a escape zone. Below the bottom of the DLZ is the target's range. To the left of that is the heading for target intercept, and to the left of that is the estimated missile impact time. The non-cooperative target recognition, NCTR, interrogation is calling the target an IL-76 transport. On the HUD, the target designation, TD box, is showing the location of the PDT and the allowable steering error, ASC circle, with an angle off indicator line is telling us the direction the target is heading. If a friendly target is locked, the TD box will have an X through it. We want to fly the aircraft to place the steering dot inside the ASC circle. Note that the missile DLC from the VSD is also mirrored here on the HUD. When the AIM-7 is in range, a triangle will appear below the TD box. Press right ALT and the spacebar together to launch the missile. The flashing time to intercept T indication at the bottom of the HUD will now count down to zero at estimated missile intercept. For an AIM-7, you must keep the target locked the entire time of missile flight.
This concludes this lesson on using the radar and radar-guided missiles. You can press the escape key to take control now.